Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. What's up? Uh, hey, thanks for checking us out. If it is your first time watching, listening, or whatever with Nation, I appreciate you checking us out. Hopefully, this is not the worst thing you've done today, and you want to go back and watch some previous episodes. This is episode number 58, so it is a weekly podcast. We've got lots of stuff to catch up on, all about 30 minutes long, so get to listening. Uh, but if you are one of the uh, regulars here, if you're one of the nation, one of the cool kids, what is going on? If you watch every single week, you thumbs up every single video, and you comment, and all the other cliche that YouTube people tell you to do, thank you. It's because of you I continue to get to do this show. Uh, if you are the next, the next level, the top tier, the elite cool kid, if you buy your supplies through me with Window Cleaning Resource, and I'm your rep, and you call me, and you text me, and you do everything and tell me to put your order in, then you are the reason that uh, I get real tuna in my tuna casserole. So thank you very, very much. Uh, if you want to order your supplies through me, it would mean the world, truly, big or small, doesn't matter. Um, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell. You can even reach out uh, via text. Uh, just text me. Be like, what's up, man? If you got everything in your cart, I love those ones too. You guys get to shop whenever and whenever you, you have the chance. Put it all in your cart. Text me. Be like, it's in my cart. I want you to get credit for it. Put the order in for me, and I will call you and make it happen. Thank you in advance. And what I'm going to do right now, if you haven't thumbs up this video that you're watching on, if you're watching on YouTube, right now, in the next three seconds, go ahead and thumbs up. Three, two, one. Hopefully you thumbs up. I want to do that. I want to get people to give me thumbs up because I need that boost to my ego. <laughs> no, actually, it does help the videos out. Just like sharing the content, uh, if you listen to the podcast, if you watch YouTube, if you do whatever, share it out. Truly, guys, it means the world to me. I really genuinely appreciate it, and it helps this show get bigger, bigger, and bigger. Anyway, um, this week... I want to give a shout out to a couple people, and we got the winner winner. So uh, the winner winner we'll start with first is Cameron Clark. So actually, Cameron Clark is the winner, and he's the person uh, that the um, episode is actually, uh, he gave the idea for it. So you're just, it's the Cam Cameron Clark like show. But what's up? You're the winner. $50 credit for Window Cleaning Resource and the swag bag. Uh, all you need to do is just email me your info, and I will get you on the list to get that swag bag. And just like Jason Thomas, just, JT is just all over my butt about this. It gets put on a list. Your name gets put on a list, and then they send out in batches. So if you don't get your swag bag right away, don't bust my balls. Just hang out. Be cool, man. You'll get it soon enough. Uh, but anyway... Uh, shout outs this week. First, I want to give a huge shout out to Mr. Uh, Jordy. Uh, listen, the window cleanse, awesome stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Um, talk to him. He's always watching the show. Really genuinely appreciate it. Tradman. Tradman uh, gave me a shout out on the end of his show. Uh, last week, watch his stuff. It's awesome and it's just it's good stuff. Uh, also, Billy Mason. What's going on, man? Uh, also, uh, really enjoy talking to him. He is an awesome, awesome dude. So, uh, those are the shout outs. If you want to win, we give away something every single week. All you need to do is comment on this YouTube video right now. Be the first, be the second, be the whatever. Just comment on this video. And next week we randomly pick a winner, which someone one time said we didn't randomly do that or something. Uh, it's a random YouTube generator that is uh, available online, so if anybody wants to check that. But anyway, it's random. Just comment, comment, and uh, you get uh, pulled. And I always appreciate comments and the thumbs up. I appreciate that, guys. But anyway, uh, I want to talk real quick about the huge convention. It is coming up, and you see tons of stuff all over. And if you haven't gotten tickets, tickets keep going up in price. The closer we get to the event, it is coming up in like weeks, weeks, like. A month from when this comes out, I think. Pretty darn close. Anyway, it is August 23rd and 24th. Don't give me that crap excuse that you don't have the money to go. Go. Let's hang out. 
Come on. No, uh, it's going to be amazing. It's huge. The hotel sold out, unfortunately. Again, it keeps selling out. There are no more rooms at all uh, for the event. This event is the biggest time, biggest one we've had yet. Uh, it's, it's panning out to be, so I apologize. But there is hotels all around there. You just can't stay at the main one because you waited too long. But get your tickets either way because if the ticket side of things close up, then you're SOL and you're not going, right? Buy your ticket, go to thehugeconvention.com or text me or call me, 862-312-2026, and I'll get you a ticket. You want a ticket? I can put that in for you. That's what I do. I'm a salesman. I can sell you tickets. So uh, either way, let me know. Uh, And yes, I make credit on the tickets, so hit me up. Anyway, August 23rd and 24th, the Software Service Software Summit. As my phones are ringing here. Service Software Summit is before that. Uh, on the 22nd sign up for that too it is amazing curtis kempton one of the awesomest people ever uh, he's putting that on all the software guys are going to be there you can learn everything you need to know in the software side of things it's just amazing i'm not going to talk about it anymore just go stop making excuses this is your ch- this is your time invest in your company in this i'm telling you you go to one of them you'll never miss another one anyway All right, so this week on the episode, again, brought to you by Cameron Clark. I should have some awesome, like, you know, this week's episode brought to you by Cameron Clark. Uh, Bleach, it's what's for dinner. I don't know. But uh, he suggested this, but I wanted to put it out there. Uh, He suggested doing Claiming Your Area. I wanted, like, a fun title, like Claim Your Domain or something like that. But, you know, that makes you think website, and that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is how do you pick your service area? Like, how? What do you do? What means it's good? What means it's bad? What means it's going to suck or not? Let's talk about that, right? First off, I want to bring something up to everybody's attention. Now, when you pick out your service area, this does not mean it's set in stone. I mean, you're going to maybe buy another location. You're maybe going to have another office. You may have another hub like I did, an hour away where it is its own kind of hub and you try to go from there. You could expand in any way you want. You can't be wrong. I'm just some guy who happens to own a microphone. So just take this all with a grain of salt. But this is what I look at when getting into a new area. Now, first off, if you're doing pressure washing, take a look around. If things are green, moving to the south, I now know that, then it's a great area, right? But you need to know who is there and around you. That's the first one. Knowing who is around and knowing your competition. Now, I've talked about competition. We did an episode, and we're going to be doing another episode on the competition pretty dang quickly. Um, But you got to know your competition. Now, knowing your competition and just knowing their name, that's completely different. If you know that XYZ exists, know them. Find out about them. What are they doing? How do they advertise? What areas are they? What services do they offer? What are they? Right? You have to know what they do because you're not trying to copy them. You're trying to find A, holes in what they do and where they do it that you can fill. But you're also trying to see who is there. If you have 30 competitors in your city right around you within a 10-mile area, maybe it's saturated and you got to find a way to USP, right? To get yourself above and beyond these other guys. It tells you a lot. Now, with competition, not to get in this, you need to be friends with your competition, right? Send me a hate letter on that one. Tell me, oh, that's stupid. They can go rotten hell. I don't care. That's fine. But here's the thing with competition. You need to be at least friendly with them. A, there's enough windows for everybody, right? If you're struggling out there, I'm so truly sorry that you're struggling but you can find more windows. You can work and bust your butt harder. You can do more. Open up your area. You can do whatever you are to get the windows. We have enough out there no matter how many competition, how many people there are. Some people have to work a little harder for it because there's more competition. But if you are friends with your competition, and this has happened. I had a uh, acquaintance that was my competition, which I don't know. I call them friends. I never really invited any of them over to like, you know, a birthday party or something because... It's still a little weird if they're close. I know people who are super tight with their competition, at least one or two that, um, you know, you're really tight with. That's awesome. I just never had that relationship with anyone. Um, But acquaintance-wise, I've had people calling me up and go, hey, Jersey, man, I'm hanging it up. (sighs) Really? 
John Doe, I can't believe you're doing that, man. That's crazy. You just had enough. Yeah, it's time to retire. Dude, that's crazy, man. I, I wish you all the luck. And, you know, if you ever need anything from me, definitely I'm here for you, man. Yeah, and that's what I was calling you about. I'm actually calling because I want to get you, give you my customers. I want anybody that calls me to get them sent over to you. Really, that's awesome. What can I pay you? And then you get in, open the door. Sometimes people want 25% or whatever. Pay it to them. Because now you got two numbers. If somebody calls XYZ, but yet you're patched over to you, man, that's huge. That's huge. Definitely worth a little bit of money to pay somebody up front. That's why you are. Now, I had this situation happen. This is not going to happen to everybody. I'm telling you right now. This is just a crazy situation. I've mentioned it before, but a guy who was the city over next to me, very close, 15 minutes, uh, I talk to him all the time. Always saw him, stopped by, hey, what's going on? I always talk to him when we were in the car. My guys talk to him. Uh, one day, uh, he says, hey, man, I'm going to be up there. Uh, you want to do lunch? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on down. Meet me at my shop. I'll give you a tour of our facility, whatever. And, um, yeah, we'll go out after that. I'll buy you lunch. He goes, oh, awesome. Shows up, went through everything. He goes, dude, there's no way. This is how he put it to me. He said, there's no way I'll ever catch up to you. So I just want you to take everything. Take everything and just make sure my customers are taken care of. What? Yeah, he gave me his company. Now, mind you, he did... A couple different services one of them happened to be window cleaning and he just handed it over it wasn't super extremely large it just was one of those things where he was kind of thinking about it anyway maybe that's why he wanted the meal uh but yeah he just handed me his customers here's my customer list uh, they were all commercial they all got done a regular frequency i just stepped in and we started doing it. it was great so being friends with the competition is huge but knowing what they're doing you can know what it is that you may be competing against or what you may not want to do. If, if you have 10 of your competitors that are all going into, uh, you know, one specific thing like a, a 20 window special in this area, they're all doing it. You now know all their pricing on the 20 windows. No one's going to compete on pricing. Don't compete on pricing, I'm telling you. But USP, if everybody's at 199 you be 299 right? Why, why would you do that? Because sell it. Why are they buying a Ferrari? Let them know. USP, everybody's competing at the 200. They're going to be intrigued when they see yours for $100 more. Um, but if they're all doing that, maybe you don't even want to advertise 20 windows. Maybe you want to advertise 15 windows. It's all the same thing. It doesn't matter. You could advertise 10 windows. I know somebody who has a six window special. Yes, that's absolutely serious. They do residential uh, uh, route work. Six windows. You pick six windows in your house. They do it. It's uh 20 bucks no what was it uh outside only i don't remember what the price was but it's outside only there's six windows every single week every single other week or whatever and this is the u.s by the way uh they're unique they're the only ones that are doing it the only way he knew he was the only one doing that is by checking the competition seeing what they're doing so check it see what they're doing how they're doing what they do where they're going where their service area is and what they offer what they don't offer Tailor your services kind of based on them. Either way. Uh, another big one to know where your service area should be, how you're morphing, or what your circle kind of looks like, is property values. Now, this is a dumb one. Everybody goes, well, of course, uh, more expensive houses. But here's the thing. I would 100, 100, 100,000 million, not a number that even exists. I would 1 billion times rather have a cookie cutter house that I can be in and out in two hours and make $300, then have a house that I could be for uh, eight hours and make $1,000, right? You know, these giant monster houses where these people are just so picky and they're so, you know what your bread and butter is, right? Not just do you need to know home values, but you need to know where they are. Now, I know that a four bedroom, 2,500 square foot cookie cutter style house, that is my goal. They're going to be windows that are less than 10 years old. I know that they're going to be a certain style. I know that I can get into a neighborhood and they're all still working people who just have more time, more money than time, and I can get into that neighborhood. I know that. And I know where my median value is for that. And I know what the houses look like and I know the type of subdivision. I know what all that looks like. So I can find that pockets all over and go, that's my bread and butter right there. I can make more money per hour on those and they're happier and I don't have to deal with uh, people being picky or whatever other things. I mean, you know, everybody's got their service area. Comment down below. I really do love hearing when you guys comment down below about that. But pain in the butt customers, 
you don't have to deal with them at that kind of that price point. So know the prices of your home, where you're going and what you're doing is different than me or somebody else. This is also going to kind of pair into knowing how far you want to go. Now, I talk to guys in Texas who their drive time, they go, what's your, what's your service area? Ah, I won't go farther than an hour and a half. An hour and a half? Are you kidding me? What? I'm I kid you not, I've met multiple people who are doing hour, hour and a half drives. That is mind-boggling to me. The, the, the areas that I'm in, personally, 20 minutes is my max. 20 stinking minutes is my max. Ah, well, let me rephrase that. I could do an outskirts of probably 25, 30 minutes. But that's it. Like, if I'm down there 30 minutes away because we're so tight... I'm going to have, I have to have multiple jobs down there. I have to pair it on a day that multiple jobs down there so it makes sense for me. But I'm not going to drive 20 minutes down and 20 minutes back for a job. That's, that's crazy to me. Some guys will go farther than that. You have to find what works best for you in your area. Now, if you know what type of neighborhood or type of house you're looking for and you know how far you're going to go, you can search it out. Like if you are an hour, awesome, high five. Do anything you want. You can't be wrong in your own business, right? You're always right. But you, in an hour range, you may have a lot more of those cookie cutter style neighborhoods or uh, maybe you're looking for the mansions, right? You can find all that, pair it all together and find the best place that you have. You may be located somewhere that's 45 minutes away from somebody somewhere that is a giant market that you want to be in. That's fine. You may just be there all the time. I know somebody else who does that. They're always 30, 40 minutes outside. They always travel. When they leave their house or their uh, shop, they're working out of their house, they go 45 minutes. That's where they go, and that's where they clean all around there. They don't clean the other way. They don't clean south, and they don't clean anywhere in their own neighborhood. Again, it's because of where people are. It was because of where I was and, and that kind of thing. We didn't want to step on each other's toes. So, you know, you can certainly do that. But, again, you can't be wrong. But if you're going that far... You need to know, A, is your truck going to have a minimum? And B, is your, are you going to have a truck charge? Now, a truck charge works like this. Now, if you have to go 45 minutes, you don't need to tell somebody on their bed, well, the truck charge is this. No, you don't need to break it down that much. Nobody cares about what you're you know, charging for uh, you know, towel laundry or something. Everything that works into that price. They just need to know an actual price, right? Uh, very, uh, if they want to itemize, you just break down the windows, divide it, whatever it comes out to. But we did have a truck charge for some cities. If we go to a certain area, whenever the bid, I check, tack on 25 bucks. And that just helps a little bit for the employee costs and things, gas, everything else to get there. You can do that. But do you have a truck charge? If you have a truck charge, how much is it? Now, if you have a hundred dollar truck charge, your bid is always going to be a hundred dollars more than somebody who doesn't have that. You know, if you're comparable in pricing. So if that's what puts you ahead, now sell it. Sell while you're more. You know, but you have to find out if you have the truck charge. And if you have truck minimums, what is that going to be? Now, if you're driving an hour, and this is just my opinion, you should have some kind of truck minimum to make you driving that hour make sense. Like, I will drive an hour if my job is over $4.99. Or I will drive an hour if my job is over $2.99. Whatever your market's at. Right? We talk about pricing, we talk about raising your prices, but whatever you think that truck minimum or that truck charge is, maybe you don't have a truck charge, but you have a truck minimum. Now, if you do, maybe it's worth your time to pick up those houses that far away because it's you're getting such a good price. It's up to you, man. It's, you can do however and whatever you want. You're not going to be wrong with that, but you need to know what you're going to charge. And that will all tell you, where you're focusing your business, where you're focusing on. Um, the other thing to kind of think about is what you're focusing on. You have residential and you have commercial. Those are really two completely separate beasts. We've talked about that a lot of times. But route is way different than commercial. And route, think of route like this. Wherever your main location is your shop or your house or your garage or storage unit wherever you're working out of there's a circle and it's a spiral and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger around there but that's how you start 
doing route. You need to go very close to where is the closest places I can go. Let's build the route. As you build, you can open up that circle. Build, 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 build. Open up that circle, right? So as you grow, then that's how your route grows. That's how you do route. If you just go and, um, you know, just go out an hour in route, you're going to be sad because you're going to have a $20 route job that's an hour away and doesn't make any sense. So you have to go and do that spiral. That is huge in the world of route. Now, route may be completely different than your residential. Different truck charge, different, uh, you know, routes may be, I go uh, out that hour, I go that once a month because I have some jobs and I only book jobs out there that are once a month. Eventually, you may want to go once every two weeks out there just so it makes more sense. But what's going to happen is you may go out that one way and then somebody goes, I'd like it done every other week. Now, you're driving all that hour for that one $20 job that you usually do with a bunch of other ones once a month. Now, it's your time to go, okay, you want to sell every two weeks. Now, it's my turn to sell every other one of them into getting it done every other week so that it makes sense. So it's on you when it comes to that. But route is very, very different. Um, you know, that's why you see a lot of guys start paying their commission-based. If you're commission-based, I don't care if you're going out an hour because it doesn't cost me any more other than the fuel. You're the one that's not going to be very happy to drive an hour for $20. What's commission on $20? Was that $3.80, $6, and 38%? You're at uh, $7 and, oh gosh, 40 cents? Bad with instant math. So $7.40 to drive an hour there, an hour back, plus do the work, that's not very good, right? So you don't want to make somebody unhappy by doing that. Residential, on the other hand, if you're sending somebody an hour out, maybe it should be worth it to you. Maybe you should have a truck charge. Maybe you should have that total for the day. That may be a very, very big boost to you to kind of know that if I'm going that far, that's really where, you know, it makes it worth going that far. Now, the other thing to look at in, in, in uh, your area is right now where I am, I'm about an hour-ish, 45 minutes from the border of South Carolina. So if you know about where that is, I'm in Charlotte. Charlotte's right on the border pretty much. Um, I don't want to go into South Carolina. Now, if I did ever go into South Carolina, I need to check the local laws because some states have different laws than other states, obviously, right? That could be a big factor. Now, where I was in Wisconsin, I was only 15 to 20 minutes off the border. Uh, there's different. We were right next to Illinois, obviously. In Illinois, you start getting a little bit more, uh, you guys have heard of the union stuff down there and things like that. It didn't necessarily affect us as much, but we didn't want to really go down there a lot of times. You stayed north, so you know where your circle is does not have to be. You don't have to be right in the center of that circle. That circle can actually be moved. You may not go but 20 minutes one way, but an hour the other way. It's all up to what the area is, and you need to find out where the money is. The other thing on where you're finding or what pockets you're finding or the house values or all that, with your max distance, with your pockets, and with the type of house you're looking for, where are you going to spend your marketing dollars? Now, if you're marketing on Facebook, awesome, high five, you're probably making a billion dollars. Facebook's a great one. They're, they're sucking now a little bit more. Uh, I don't need anybody to argue me with the algorithms, things like that. But if you're doing direct mail or you're doing any targeted ads, why did I, targeted? If you're doing any targeted ads or anything weird like that, um, you need to know where you're going to target. Now, it doesn't have to be right around you. It needs to be where you're making the most money or where your potential to make the most money is. And this all comes back to knowing where you need to pick, where you need to hone in, where your circle is, and then in that main circle of service, where your focuses are. Because in EDDM, you can get very targeted, even if it, it doesn't seem like it because you're doing mail routes. You can actually have one mail route. I think the neighborhood I live in right now has maybe, I want to say, three mail routes in this one neighborhood. It's 900 homes. So um, 
there could very well be the possibility to have routes in a neighborhood. You need a neighborhood, you got to pick those routes. You don't need to advertise to everybody on the way there as much as you just want to advertise to that area. And that's all picking and choosing kind of where you want to work. That's going to tell you where your marketing dollars. Now, split test everything because even if there's a pocket somewhere you think is going to be great, don't put all your eggs in that basket because you need to find out if that's great. We had a we had a neighborhood. It wasn't even a neighborhood, it was like a subdivision y kind of thing. It was an area, you know, it had its own little town name, but it wasn't you know what I'm saying. And this place was you drove through and it was like money signs in your eyes. Like this is absolutely these were all people from Illinois. Like this was perfect. Vacation y houses, just expendable income. It was great. It was not great. The advertising was not there. The people that we advertised to didn't live there. So you weren't really advertising to them. You were advertising to their vacation homes, which a lot of the times either they held their mail and by the time they got there, they were only there. So if they got their mail when they picked it up, it was too late. They're already there. They're not going to call you because they're only there for a couple weeks. So it just went to, to, to find out it was a sucky location only by doing some marketing to that area. Don't go and market everything you have. And like others have talked about, don't go and spend, I got $2,500, which I, I'm going to send all EDDM to what neighborhood. Don't do that. Split test. Split test. If I said, hey, if you give me $10, I'll give you 10 back. Or you can give me uh, $8 and I'll give you $40 back. What are you going to do? Well, duh. Obviously, you're going to go 8 for 40, right? But the only way you can find out that is by split testing. It's trying it. Try it and see what works. Everybody's area is different. Don't talk, to, especially with the huge convention coming up. When you're talking to people, suck it up. Don't say instantly, oh, it's not going to work in my area. I have that all the time. People say, uh, yeah, my customers need me. They, they, I couldn't have employees. If, they, if I wasn't there, they wouldn't have us. As a, as a, you're, you're full of it. Your customers are not any different than my customers. What can be different is the way that they're buying, right? But the customers are the same. So don't don't knock it till you try it. And when you're at the huge convention, don't listen to somebody saying, oh, this is the way to do it, and just assume it's going to instantly work for you. Or assume that it's instantly not going to work for you. Because I've talked to guys who don't do EDDM because EDDM does not work in the area. That's what they say. So, you know, that's... It's just Mike Draper. You you know Mike Draper, uh, Mr. Safety. You know he's in his area. EDDM did not work for him. So putting all his money into that would have been a huge failure. He would have found out. So split test everything. Find your area. Find your type of person. If you read the book, uh, the marketing blueprint, Window Cleaners Marketing Blueprint, it talks about knowing your customer, making up a fake name, Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith is uh, age, you know, forty two to fifty three, like. She works, she has two and a half kids. Like finding out who your customer is and knowing where they live shows you your target area. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you got something out of it or hopefully you just wanted to hang out. And uh, either way, I appreciate it. Thank you to Cameron Clark for giving me the idea. If you have an idea for a show, I would love to hear it. You guys don't understand how hard it is to talk in a little hole in my camera every single week without ideas. So definitely... Definitely let me know. Uh, put it in the comments. Send me an email, josh at window cleaning resource. Most importantly, the biggest thing you could possibly do, other than sharing the comment uh, content, sharing it out, is ordering through me. That's how I make my cheddar. So do that. 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone number. Save it in your phone. Text me. That's my number. I'm telling you. It's really me. Just text me. Be like, what's up? I need this. Anyway, thank you so very much. Now, every single week at the very end of the show, if you didn't know this before, if this is the first time watching the end, I give a code every single week, and it gets you 5% off an order through me. The code this week is Cameron Clark. You tell me the name Cameron, and uh, I'll give you 5% off your order. You got to order through me. Give me a call, like I said, or shoot me a text, and uh, we'll get it done. Thanks, everybody, for watching, checking us out, listening, everything else. Go make a billion dollars and be epic. Get your tickets to the huge convention so we can say what's up. And I am giving away all the high fives you can handle. So please do that. Go be, be epic. Make some money. And uh, we'll see you next week.